My invisible friends, hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. Tonight, it is about a tutorial session, a recitation on DC motors for my third year students here at UBC. The exercise begins with a DC machine that has everything we could think of, but we will be using only some of its windings in each of the particular questions. The machine is rated for 15 horsepower, the terminal voltage 240 volts, the rated speed is 1200 RPM, the rated line current that we will exceed enormously, uh, but make no fuss about that is 55 amperes, the values of the resistances of the field coil, the armature, and the series excitation coil are given as well and the adjustable resistor in the field circuit has a value that ranges between 100 and 400 ohms. The number of turns of the coils for the field coil and the series coils are given. The losses, mechanical losses at full load are, are given as 1800 ones. We will assume then constants within the range of operation of the machine between idling and full load. The magnetization curve provided by the manufacturer is seen in the next slide. To begin, let's set the adjustable resistor to 175 ohms. That is a curve, that is the magnetization curve of this DC motor measured at 1200 RPM. We begin with a shunt DC motor, a very friendly shunt DC motor. And it's idling. What does idling mean? It means that it has no mechanical load attached to it. P out is zero for an idling motor. I always begin my DC motors questions and drawing the equivalent circuit to have a visual cue of what the currents and voltages relationships are. The current in the field coil, this one, will be responsible for the flux in the air gap. That current, IF, in this case, is given simply by the ratio Ohm's law of Vt divided by the resistance of that branch. That is 0 0.87 amperes. With that one, we can go directly to the curve. And in that curve, we see that for an excitation of 0 0.87 amperes in the field coil. The induced voltage EA in the armature should have been 270 volts if the machine were rotating at 1200 RPM, but it isn't. But if it had been rotating at 1200 RPM, the induced voltage would be 270 volts. Let's keep that in mind. Put a pin on it and move on. The converted power for the idling machine is just the rotation and losses, just the mechanical losses. On the electrical side, EAIA. On the mechanical side, the losses, 1800 uh, watts. And that is our first equation, two unknowns, EA and IA. We need another equation. What equation would that be? Well, the loop equation around the, the external loop of that equivalent circuit says that the uh, value of the a battery on the left is the induced voltage A plus a drop in the RA resistor. Correct. It replace the values, the symbols with, with the values. That is the second equation. Two equations, two unknowns you solve for EA and IA. Let's solve for EA. The first one is a nonlinear equation. We get two solutions. EA could be either 3 volts or 237. The rule of thumb is you choose the one that is closest and below VT. VT is 240, so the one we choose is 237 volts. But a minute you say, where does that rule of thumb come from? Uh, well, it goes like this. It is mathematically true that EA 3 volts is a solution to the set of equations. But if EA is that small, the current in the armature, which is VT minus EA divided by RA, would be enormous. IA would be a very, very big current. And we remember that the torque, the accelerating torque of the machine, 
coffee IA is proportional to the current in the armature. So the accelerating torque is huge. The machine will keep on accelerating, will gain more speed. As it gains more speed, the EA will also increase. EA, coffee, omega. At one point, it will reach the other solution of the equations and will set there 237 volts. Well, you say, wait a minute, the curve says 270, but the actual computation gave us that EA is 237. They are different. What gives? The speed is different. The curve says, with that excitation, I have 0 0.87 amperes. If the machine were rotating at 1200 RPM, the EA would be 270 volts. But we get a lower voltage. 237. What does it mean? That our machine is rotating at a lower speed than 1200 RPM. Proportionality, how much smaller? Here it is, the actual velocity. 1054 RPM. And that is the idling speed for this shunt DC motor. Next, we will apply full mechanical load and see how the speed of the motor changes. Let's do that. The planning of the question is exactly the same. I draw the equivalent circuit, there I identify the field current and compute when the field current is and of course it's the same one. I have not changed the adjustable resistor. 0 0.87 amperes with that we go to the curve and we get the same value 270 volts at 1200 RPM. That's the same that hasn't changed. What has changed is that now P converted includes the output power. Is the losses 1800 plus the output power which is rated power. Full load rated power is the output power. 15 horsepower multiplied by 746 watts per horsepower. Mind you, this is electrical machines and this is in an industrial standard. We don't use the conversion factor than we used in physics. No, it has been agreed among uh, the manufacturers of electric machines to use exactly the value 746. That is a conversion factor for electric motors. The converted power is 12,990 oh, watts. The other equation is the same as before. Two equations, two unknowns, and we solve for EA. Again, we get two possibilities, 24 volts and 216. And you know from our previous conversation, the solution is 216 oh, volts. Different from, from 270, right? Yes. Uh, why? Because of the difference in speed. The speed of the motor fully loaded is 960 revolutions per minute. You say, ha, ah, when I load the motor, it slows down. It came from 1,054 to only 960. Uh, that is right. Uh, that change of speed of the DC motor, when we change it, we, we call that the speed regulation of the motor. Actually, it's defined backwards. The speed regulation of a motor tells us how much the motor accelerates, a motor that is carrying its rated load, how much it speeds up when we remove the load. It is computed like that. The idling speed minus the full load speed with respect to the full load speed in percent. You can compute that using the RPM speed or uh, the radians per second speed is going to be the same value. In our case, the speed regulation is 1,054 minus 960 over 960 times 100, 9.79 percent. That is the speed regulation of our motor. And that was part B of this question. Part C is, what is the torque of the load at full load? What is the torque delivered by the DC motor at full load at rated power? Well, we we'll remember the mechanical power formula. That is, the output power is the torque of the load multiplied by the angular velocity in radians per second. Uh, that's right. Uh, and we know 
omega mac and we know p out that is a rated bar so all we have to do is solve for t load the torque of the load and it's 111 newton meters how big a torque is that to put that in perspective i thought mm, let's compare that to the torque of um, a gasoline um, engine in this case the gasoline engine of a bmw m1000 motorcycle uh, the torque of that motor is 113 newton meters at 11 thousand rpm you say hey pretty much the same torque yeah um, but look at a much higher speed so that means that the output power is much much bigger the output power the same torque but much much a uh, higher power uh, just for fun the picture of that motor is this one that's a beauty now what happens if we increase the value of the adjustable resistor why well because if we increase the adjustable resistors value that would decrease the value of the field current would decrease in the flux in the air gap and according to our lecture material that would speed up the machine the machine would go faster let's see how much faster it will again I begin with drawing the equivalent circuit and identify there what is the field current. In this case, the field current is slightly smaller, it's 0 0.67 amperes. Why? Because the adjustable resistor is bigger. Before it was 175, now it is 250. Uh, with that value of the field current, we go to the curve and obtain uh, that the speed of the motor, if the machine had been rotating at 1200 rpm that voltage would be 247 volts let's compute from the circuit uh, what it truly is the converted power of the machine the machine still delivering rated power it's fully loaded uh, so the equation is still eaia the converted power is 12,990 watts the other equation the other equation is still the same so for that uh, the EA voltage is 216 and now and now we compare that to 247 and realize hey hey if the machine were rotating at 1200 rpm uh, the voltage induced EA in the armature would have been 247 but it's 216 what is the actual speed of that machine and surprise of surprises or maybe no surprise the speed is 1049 so the speed now fully loaded is almost the same as the speed that the motor used to have idling that it puts something right so we can regulate we can control the speed of the motor that way let's include now armature reaction well, remember that um, the magnetic motive force applied to the air gap has a component due to the field coil to the series coil and one that is due to the armature reaction of course i'm uh, writing that equation as if the composition is um, additive uh, well there is no composition in this exercise this is a shunt motor so uh, the series coil is not connected but anyway, from there, we obtain what is the equivalent field, field coil current. Uh, that is the one we use to go to the curve. We know that. The term in the middle, because there is no series coil connected in this case, is neglected. Let's say that the armature reaction value is given by a phrase like this one. Like this one. The armature reaction is 1200 amps when the armature carrying is 55 amperes it is a convoluted way of telling us what is the value of the constant kar which in this case is 21.8 amperes per ampere that is kar and we are ready to compute uh, what is the uh, the equivalent field current for this machine you're saying okay okay um, so it's going to be a uh, uh, this one, yeah, the actual current in the field coil, 
and a, a fraction of the series called carrying minus 21.8 divided by the number of turns in the field coil times the armature carry. All right. And from that we go to the curves. The reality is a little bit simpler than that in this case because there is no serious coil, there is no serious carry, and that formula simplifies by one term. The converted power, same as before, is uh, including the rated power of the machine. 12,990 watts, that is converted power. If the KVL equation on the outside loop remains the same, hasn't changed. You solve them and we get EA. 216. And with that, we can compute what is the current in the armature, 60 amperes. With the current in the armature, we observe now we have the current in the field coil at 175 ohms, which is 0 0.87, I think. And the armature current that we just computed, 60.1 amperes. And uh, there is no serious coil. So we can compute uh, the a equivalent field coil current uh, so it is like that so it only has uh, the field uh, coil and the armature reaction those are the only terms because there is no serious coil in this circuit it's only a shunt motor and look uh, the equivalent field current is not 0 0.87 once we include the armature reaction uh, that has been reduced to 0 0.39 with that we go to the curve and at 1200 rpm that gives us uh, that ea would have been a puny 167 volts we go through the same tango as before we say hmm, if the machine were rotating at 1200 rpm ea would have been 216 but the reality is at 167 so the machine in reality is rotating at 1,552 rpm the machine has really sped up due to the armature reaction. See the effect of armature reaction. Surprisingly, some more carrying in the armature speeds off the motor, something that is very often undesirable. Let's work now with a long cumulative compounded motor. A 100 horsepower 250 volts cumulatively compounded DC motor. This is also sometimes called additive composition or cumulative composition. It is when the MMF applied by the series coil helps the MMF applied by the field coil. We will see an example of differential or subtractive composition later on in the same video. Let's concentrate on this one. The internal resistance of this uh, motor that is RA plus RS the sum of the resistance of the armature and of the series coil is 0 0.04 ohms um, and we are given NF NF is a thousand turns per, per pole and NS is three turns per pole idling that is P out is zero idling the adjustable resistor in the field circuit has been adjusted so that the speed of the motor is 1200 rpm neglect and uh, the rotational losses or the mechanical losses and ignore also our mature reaction uh, so don't consider that and what are we to find we need to find what is the value of the adjustable resistor and with that to find what is the current in the in the field coil the idling shunt field coil current. That is the first task. Then, and so as the second question will be, if if the current in the armature, not the terminal current, mind you, but the actual armature current is 200 amperes, um, what is the speed of the motor in RPM? And last, if the motor is, is connected um, for a differential composition, subtractive composition. So that is, the MMF of the series coil is subtracted from the MMF of the field coil. And again, we measure that the armature current is 200 amps. Then, what is the speed of the motor in RPM? Let's solve those questions one at a time.
The magnetization characteristic of this motor, instead of given by a curve, is given by a table. This one. How are we going to use it? Linear interpolation, of course. As it is my want, I always draw the equivalent circuit for the question at hand. This is a long compounded DC motor. The distance of the field coil to the armature is long. It's separated by the series coil. Uh, there, we're ready. We say the sum of our A plus our S is given 0 0.04 ohms. It's a big motor. The terminal voltage is 250 volts. And uh, the converted power is 0. Because the motor is idling, P out is 0. And because we have been, been instructed to ignore the, the mechanical losses, P rod, so converted power is 0. On the electrical side, EA times IA, the converted power is 0. So, which means that either EA and IA are zero, or one or the other is zero. But we remember that EA is K5 omega. The one that tongue in cheek I say, coffee omega, that formula, omega is not zero. The motor is obviously rotating. They're asking us to find, um, they are telling us that it's rotating, all right? So, omega is not zero. The flux is not zero in that circuit. Uh, there is uh, some excitation to it. So this cannot be zero. The only way that a product EAIA is zero is because IA is zero. That is the implication of those two equations. We know that the armature current is zero. If the armature current is zero, there is no drop in the 0 0.04 ohm resistor. And EA is equal to VT. EA is 250 volts. Good. So that is the reality. And now but let's explore. Let's explore the curve. Let's explore the curve. You say up to 1200 RPM. If the voltage EA is 250 volts in the curve, that means uh, that the field current is 5 amperes. 5 amps. You see that there? Well, the current IF is 5 amps. By the way, that is IF asterisk. All right. It is a combined effect of the field and the series coil and the armature reaction where there is armature reaction, not in this question. Um, but uh, that equivalent field current, it is computed as IF plus the composition, all right, the composition of ice minus the armature reaction that we know is zero in this question. Um, but out of discipline, I like writing all the whole expression. Uh, the series coil uh, current is zero because it's the same armature current that we um, decided has to be zero amperes. We decided that before. And the armature current, of course, is zero, but regardless of that, we were instructed to neglect the armature reaction. So that means uh, that 5 amps is indeed the current in the field coil. That is the current. But if that is the current, then we can compute easily what is the value of the resistance in that path. And that would be Vt, 250, divided by 5 by the current. That is a total resistance. And because we know the resistance of a field coil, we can solve for the resistance in the adjustable, uh, adjustable resistor. By the way, we could have solved this also um, by brute force using the calculator. You see, we write the first equation, which is that the electrical converted power is zero. That is equation one. And we write the KVL equation, equation two, IA is 250 minus EIA divided by 0 0.04. Look at the circuit. And uh, uh, and then from there, uh, uh, you, uh, you, def you, you solve uh, the system of equations for EA and IA and look, you have two possibilities. Yeah. Either EA is 0 and the current IA is 6,250 amperes, which is impossible because we've already determined that EA cannot be 0. Then the solution is the other one. EA is 250 and the current IA is 0. So you see, you can use the HP prime to solve that. 
to. And we move on. Cumulative compounded, find RPM is the current in the armature, not the current at the external source. The current in the armature is 200 amps, measured. We have the current in the armature, 200 amperes. It should then means that EA can be computed as the external voltage. This voltage, a VT, minus the drop in the 0 0.04 resistance produced by the 200 amps. EA is 242 amperes. But, but, uh, given, um, uh, let's uh, let's compute what is the equivalent field current uh, excitation. That is the five amps that we have from the current in the field in the field coil, plus the effect of the the series coil. That is um, three turns divided by a thousand turns multiplied by the current in the series coil, which is equal to the armature current, two hundred amps. That is 5.6. With those 5.6 amperes, we go to the curve. And in the curve, in this case, we interpolate 5.6, we interpolate, and we get 262 volts. The curve says for that, uh, that set of conditions, um, if the motor were rotating at 1200 RPM, this, the, the induced voltage EA in the armature would have been 262 volts. The speed of the motor is 1100 RPM and some change. The final question is, what if under the same conditions the motor had been wired for differential composition? So we go through the same computation same as before EA is going to be in the same but when we compute the equivalent field current um, so the armature current of course is not there we've been instructed to neglect armature reaction but now observe that the term associated with the series coil has a negative sign in front we have a differential composition we have subtractive composition the equivalent field current is 4.4 amperes. With 4.4, we go to the curve, interpolate, and we get 232. And to 232, the speed is 1251 rpm. So when we have differential composition, the higher the current in the armature, the faster the machine might go, depending on the machine. And that is all my students. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to meet with you again in the next video. Just a disclaimer. My voice is a bit off because I am at the end uh, of uh, three days of fever and, and a, little, a little bit of uh, unwellness produced by a virus uh, that I caught um, probably walking through the IKEA store in Burnaby. Good night.